First of all, how do you, how do you feel about the moniker Ottawa's Cool Herc? <laughs> I have to say I'm delighted. Yes. You know, when you see a, a line of this thing and so much concentration being put into the youth doing their not only break dancing but their artwork and everybody who was really intrigued with continuing or keeping that dream alive and to see 40 years you can now come and see its glory or what was done, it's amazing. And then from the photography part of it, you have everybody who can actually take a picture so you can look back and realize in the line of what we created. Yes. And then you can actually feel comfortable that you are recognizing all the people who are contributing part in it. So, so when you first started the Confederation Park Jams, yes. what, what, what made you want to start them? You know, I really don't know where I came from, but I lived in Chicago for a while. I'd seen that the hip hop was blossoming. When I came to Ottawa, I didn't know where to go. Nothing happening for uh, people as it were, because all the radio stations play the conventional Canadian kind of music. But only when we went to Hall did the French boys were doing the disco one there. They're stuck on it and going, what it is we can do in our world? And I guess some bright eyed doctor came to me, I went to the NCC, and the NCC gave me a contractual agreement for Confederation Park. And I had to keep those documents with me constantly because the police would come and harass you about what you're doing here. So once you had the documentation pulled out to show the police, this was granted by whoever they left you alone. But every Sunday was a very, very encouraging Sunday. The reason for Confederation Park 2, because the Rio Center had all the buses falling in all different directions. So when we were through at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, everybody waved to get OC transport going east, west, north or south. It was, it was very a very convenient point for, for people not having to worry about where do I have to go to catch a bus. Everything was workable right in this confederation park here. And that was before City Hall was built. Yes. Wow. I remember the grass was green on that side, and you would either leave one side and end up floating over on the other end, but by, by the fountain, that is where everything and tell us about um, Club 747. Well, Club 747 got its just from the park. Seeing that we had no place to go, we had no club that played our music, I figured, well, let's go to Howl because Audible finishes at 1 o'clock. They said, I don't think you can get that right. But being open in Howl, you had a chance of realizing you can stay open until 3 o'clock, one hour later, but everything had to be closed by 4 o'clock. Who didn't own a car and then walked over the bridge or took the bus? So here you are at 4 o'clock, Sunday morning, walking over the bridge. Some people got tickets because of drinking. The RCMP just took control of that bridge <laughs> every Sunday night. And what was Hall like? Just, uh... Oh my God, Hall was like a, a zoo, what everybody was going to Hall. At that age, too, everybody dreamt. You see, like how he looks spiffy and not like today, how you see people just put on some jeans and go. Everybody made sure they had a way to which it was stuck and wore their outfit for Saturday night. It was like a fashion show. I really was happy to see people. no fights, nobody shooting, nobody standing. Everybody came out to them. That was a really good thing, yes. And what can you say about uh, just Canadian Four Masters, just about your, your interactions, with, interactions with them? Well, my interactions with them started because whoever came into the park realized Lenny Morris music. I brought the sound system, I brought everything. I said, 
make sure that you have the music because I had not provided and then I got involved. Buddha. And then I missed him for a while because he was always traveling. <laughs> and just, you know, be, so being here right now at this uh, exhibit, um, what, what feelings are you ha having to see that these moments I, captured? I'm impressed because I don't think at the time when I was doing the part, I was paying any attention that we should have pictures of the quarter because I was already providing one element, which was get the speakers, get the sound system, and make sure we had audio presence. So that is what I think. Now that I'm looking back on what Steve and other people have actually captured or held on to, it's amazing. Yes. Anything else? It only, it only shows that most things you you try to or start to do have some kind of photography, photograph, something to dictate what you did at that time. Once you do it, you just sit down and say, oh my God, I miss both. Because you have nothing to show the reflection of what was done. You can talk all you want, but if you don't have that vision or that movement, it doesn't identify anything you're trying to explain or just capture. What done with it that is there anything about us about that period that you think should be recorded? That any, any were there stories or anything that you know you would love to maybe five, ten years down the line, people hearing you know you're watching this. Well, what would you want to tell those people? Well, I would like to be able to get some of the people like Buddha or whoever is still available, even if it's do a smaller. Um, demonstration in some way, and to be able to capture the movement and show this is what we did. And we are still in our bones a little tight and a little not so active, but we can show you this is our participation through these years. Mm -hmm.